Are you talking about me? This you are you laying and, down? Yeah, I'm in I'm on my bed. Okay. It's got me sitting up part of the way. Hey Miss um, Mara. Hi girl. How you doing? Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Good, good. Good to see you. Yeah, I decided I'd show my face this time. <laughs> well, show your face, honey, because I'm sitting on my bed also. All right. Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes. Okay, great. My computer has been, I, I walked in the house about uh, 10 minutes ago, so my computer hasn't caught up with, uh, with me yet. So um, oh. prayerfully, we will uh, be okay. So I apologize for the late start uh, for Bible study this evening. Uh, we will be in 1 Samuel chapter 15. 1 Samuel chapter 15, and uh, we'll do a quick review, and then we will continue looking at uh, Saul and Samuel, all right? So with that, let us, uh, let us open with a word of prayer. Eternal God, we thank you for another day, just another opportunity um, to be here, to be in your word, to be together. We thank you for the opportunity to interact and to share with one another uh, using the technology from where we are at. And we thank you for the possibility, the, uh, the time that is coming, we'll be able to share together as well as being able to share virtually. Lord God, uh, I pray for myself right now that you will help me to calm down, to focus on what you want to speak to your people, that there is nothing outside of you and your word that matters right now. What matters is hearing from you. And so, Lord, we pray that you will speak to us, uh, to the deepest parts of us, uh, in our minds and our spirits and our emotions, and that you will transform us, even during this time, into the people that you need us to be. Lord God, use this time uh, to make us more like you. We thank you in advance because we believe that your word will not return to you void, but it will accomplish the purpose that you are setting it out for. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So, um, again, I apologize for the late start, um, but we will uh, move forward in God's word. So, last week, we started on 1 Samuel chapter 15. 1 Samuel chapter 15. And uh, we read, what? Uh, how far did we get, Jackie? I want to say we got to... Uh, we got to 16, 15. I think we got to 15. And yeah, so, I think so too. I think so. Yeah. All right. So, so, we were introduced, so we were introduced to two people in this story. There were two people that were sent in this, uh, in this chapter. Uh, who were they? Samuel and Saul. Samuel and Saul. All right. Samuel yes. and Saul. All right. Yeah. And, um, let's see, uh, Miss Lampkins, give me something about what do you know about Samuel? Uh, he was uh, sent by God to deliver a message to Saul, and he uh, he said he, uh, the Lord sent him to anoint him over the king of the people, and he's supposed to listen to the message. Okay. And all right, we'll we'll stop there. That's good. That's good. All right. So Samuel was sent to give Saul a message. All right. right. Who uh, Mara? Who was Saul? He was the king. Yes. King of what? Israel. Okay. And in the number of kings, which one was he? One. Yes. He was the first king of Israel. All right. Yeah. And, and so, so a couple of things that we talked about last week, one of the things we talked about is Samuel was sent to tell Saul something. Um, somebody tell me, why didn't God just tell Saul himself? He could have, but he, but uh, Samuel was the prophet. Prophet. Samuel's a prophet. What's a prophet? One who speaks the word speaks of God. God. One who speaks the word for God. So, therefore, for all of us who have an issue, well, God could have just came and told me, isn't that why he uses yeah. a prophet? A prophet. Yeah. Well, he, and he, he had already been told not, he, he had already been told not to keep anything alive and he didn't listen. No, wait, well, we ain't got there yet. Oh, Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. You, 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 <laughs> well, you, you channeling, saying, you channeling you that Jerry Lampkin spirit. Wait, wait, wait. You channeling <laughs> that Jerry Lampkin spirit. Slow down. That's what I said. You got me saying, 
saying, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so, so just dealing with the fact of, because one of the things we have to deal with is when somebody comes to you and says, God told me to tell you. Yes. And some of us, we, we, we don't like that because right? I don't like, I might not like them. I might not right. like what they're saying, but we mm -hmm. have to understand that God will use people to speak oh. to us. Yes. And we cannot just cut that off. Now, what we need to do, but I, actually, I did suggest a couple of things that we need to do. Right. If somebody comes to you and says that, what, anybody remember? It should line up with the word of God. Yes. And um, let's see. Consider the message. Well, and their character. The their character. Up. Yes. Now, their, their character is a factor, but we also have to remember God sometimes uses some people. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. yeah we might be so, so, really, that the bigger part of it is lining up with the word of God, right. lining, or lining up with God, with, with what God has already told us. Because if somebody <laughs> would come to me that I didn't like, in 1998 and said, hey, you're going to preach. God told me to tell mm -hmm. you you're going to preach. Well, that's not in the Bible, but right. that was just confirming things that I had already heard and that I yeah. had been dealing with. And so, uh -huh. so we can't just discount things because it comes from places we don't like. Exactly. Right. Because God, because we've said this before, God can use anyone True. he right. wants to use. Right. All it right. Because... And that was my, I was just going to make that point. God use a donkey. I might not want to hear a message from a, because I, ha, I have had some donkeys speak to me, but that's a whole nother. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so, so yeah. Um, so we, Samuel spoke to Saul. Okay, now, um, and he told Saul, let's see, let me find somebody. Uh, let me see. Uh, Sister Daphne, you're, you're muted. Yes, sir. Do you remember what did Samuel tell Saul to go do? Um, no, I don't. No, I don't, because I haven't gotten that far yet. All right. Anybody want to help her out? What did Samuel tell Saul to go do? To go and, and kill the, M, the Amalekites. Amalek. Everybody. The Amalekites. Everybody. The women, the children, the babies, the camel oh, animals. The cat, yeah. every the donkeys, everything. Kill everything. Yeah. Take it all out. Take yeah. it all. All right. So God sent Saul. He was sending yeah. Saul on a mission. Yes. All right. He had a purpose for Saul to go do what I want you to do. All right. And so let's see. Um, let's go. Uh, and well, let me just go ahead and ask it. Did Saul do it? No, no. He, no. He did it, but he didn't do it correctly. He, oh. he did it his way. Okay. So, so, and then, and then, so he did it. Ah, I like the way you said it. He did it his way. Because I know none of, none of, none of, we don't have any Frank Sinatra spirits out here, right? None of I did it my way spirits, right? None of that in St. Mary or in Genesis or anybody around here. We, we do it God's way. Yes, right. we do. That's right. That's right. All the time. Right. Yes. <laughs> Yes, no Frank Sinatra <laughs> for me. So he did it his way. How did God feel about him doing it his way? He, was he not didn't happy. like it. He didn't like he, it. He, it was disobedient, so he didn't like he it. All right. He so, regretted it. That's right. Ah, good word. God, he, the, the, the disobedience, God regretted putting him in a position mm -hmm. he did. because he was disobedient. And I've said this before, it, it, there, there is a part of me that is scared to death because God put me in this position as the pastor. Mm -hmm. and he never would look at me and go, I regret making him the pastor. But even more so, could he regret for making me a husband because of the way I'm treating my wife? Because he yeah. regret for making me a parent for the way that I'm treating yeah. my wife? Because he, he has governed all of these things. All of it. Yeah. yeah. And so we we yeah. want to just say, well, God told me to do this in the church and, and that's what I do for God. Wait, wait, wait. How, how much of your life does God care about? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. I mean, really, I mean, he just cares about your Sunday morning. What you do between Sunday, between 8.30 and about 1, right? <laughs> Where'd you get an idea like that from? 
if really? he's preaching like that and went by George, we may get it eventually. <laughs> <laughs> and so, 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 because because remember what I said. Whenever we look at scripture, it's yeah. easy for us. We want to be Samuel. I want to be the one that God sent. I want to be the one who grew up in the house of God. I want to be the one delivering God's message. But ha every once in a while, maybe once in your life, you've Saul. been Saul. Yeah. You've been Saul. God has told you what to do in a situation, in a circumstance. And you said, that sounds okay, but I'm going to do it my way. Different. Okay. And so it, hurt, it broke God's heart. But in this story, who, whose else's heart was broken? What happened? Samuel, Samuel, Samuel because he asked for pardon. Samuel, well, we ain't got that, but Samuel's heart was broken. Yes. Samuel's heart was broken. And why was Samuel's heart broken? He was disobedient. Because he was disobedient. He's disobedient. He didn't follow the instruction and commandment of the Lord. Okay. So let, let, let's, tie, let's tie it back. When we look at some, um, uh, Sister Annette. Yes. Can you read verse uh, 10? And eleven. Uh, I'm sorry. First Samuel fifteen verses ten and eleven. Let me get to it. Okay, I'll be reading from the New uh, Eleven Bible. Okay. Ten and ten and what? Ten and eleven. Ten and eleven. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord said to Samuel. I am sorry that I ever made Saul king. Yeah. yeah. I am sorry that I ever made Saul king. For he has again refused to obey me. Samuel was no was so deeply moved when he heard what God was saying that he cried to the Lord all mm. night. Okay. Hey, I love that. I yeah. love that. Thank you for that version. What did they say? When he heard what God said, God's he heart was broken, so yeah. Samuel's heart was broken. Yeah. And the question I asked last week is, do the things that break God's heart break okay. our hearts? What breaks God's heart? Disobedience. Disobedience. All sin is disobedience. Disobedience. Mm -hmm hurts God because actually got what uh, uh, sister Smith I just just throw this one out here <laughs> yes sir what's God's what? love language obedience so if I'm disobedient what am I saying to God I don't love you I love you mm. Mm. oh oh now I'm not gonna do what you say <laughs> oh. uh -huh. you know it's, what, what some preacher said don't, if you can't say amen say ouch yeah. <laughs> because we would we would never say it out loud. We would never say, I don't love God. I hate God. We would never say that. But someone once told me actions speak, speak, louder, speak, louder, than than speak louder, louder than words. And then yeah. Jesus God's say, love language is oh go ahead, Sister Smith. Didn't Jesus say if you love me, keep yeah. my commandments? Command. What I yes. say? Well, yeah, but, but. <laughs> you know, sometimes his commandments are tough, you know, and there are people looking and, you know, I mean, God, know, God knows my heart. Yeah, mm. And what does I he know about your heart? You know about your heart? I really do. That you don't love him? My sin. Mm -hmm. Oh, my sin. I would never say that, but your actions. And so yeah. we yeah. check ourselves is, our actions are our actions saying we don't love God. So, mm -hmm. so it broke God's heart. The sin broke God's heart, and it broke uh, Samuel's wow. heart. All right. Wow. For those of you who just joined, uh, you, you're here at a good time. We are First Samuel chapter twelve, First Samuel fifteen, and we're going to read verses twelve through um, sixteen. And um, let's see, let's see. Brother Wade, it's good to see you. Two things is here. Two things yeah. is here. He's back. Br Brother Wade, would you mind reading for me? Okay. Uh, what do you have? Uh, First Samuel 15, 12 through 16. Okay, let me get my Bible over here. First Samuel. 
All right, it's taking a minute for it to come up here. Get your internet fixed. Stop. Stop it. He being messy. He told him to get his internet fixed. I heard it. Yeah, I said it out loud. <laughs> okay. First I'm mad. I think it must be on cowboy speed. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay, never mind. Never mind. Let me find somebody else to read. Let me find oh, somebody shot. holy to read. I need someone holy because obviously that brother is not. That again, Jonah. <laughs> Go ahead, Brother Wade. First Samuel 15, 12 through 16. Okay, here we go. And we, we know that uh, KJV. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place and is going about and passed on and going down to Gilgal. And Samuel mm -hmm. came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed, blessed be, be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, What meaneth then this bleeding of the sheep in my mm -hmm. ears? And the lowing of the oxen which I hear. And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen, sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest we have <laughs> utterly destroyed. And that's through 15. 16. Yeah, go ahead and read oh, 16. Okay, thank you. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord hath said to me this night. And he said unto him, say on. All right. So, so mm -hmm. when, so it says that Samuel back up in verse 11, Samuel cried all night to God. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then he waited around a couple of weeks and got up to go find Saul. No, he got up early in the morning. In the morning. He got up early in the morning. Because here, here, so here's how we know what broke Sam, uh, God's heart, broke Samuel's heart, because Samuel got up to do something about it. Yes. And this is one of the challenges that I've had for myself all week as I've been looking at all the stuff going on in the world. And I'm looking at what, what we, we read about last week and we're reading about again this week. It broke Samuel's heart so much and he got up to do something. If it doesn't break our heart, I, I mean, if we don't get up and do anything, I'm not sure it really breaks our heart. Right. Now again, figuring out what you can do, that's a matter of prayer. Hmm. You know, what, 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 what can I do? I, I don't know. I, I can pray about it. That's a start. But Samuel didn't just pray about it because he had talked to God about it. Then he figured I need to go confront him. And, and this is also one of those cases of, you know, we're always, well, what can I do about what's going on in Minnesota? Um, I think there are some things closer to your house that God's heart might be broken about. You know, we, we want to speak truth to power, but we don't want to speak truth to parents. We don't want to speak truth to best friends. We don't want to be speak truth to our children. We just want to let that go. But doggone it, I want to yell at Biden. I want to yell at Trump. Well, I, I, I'm not saying they're not doing stuff wrong. But I think you have a, another pulpit that you can speak out of. It's one thing for me to call Sister Price. Hey, Sister Price, I'm going to yell at you and everybody in Genesis. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, you might want to start and say Mary. <laughs> mm -hmm. that's the pulpit i gave you actually even yeah. before the, the pulpit at saint mary you might want to yell at the pulpit at 47310 brownlee road mm -hmm. and, and and so and and actually really where is the if if the things that break god's heart break your heart where is the place you should actually start with dealing with that with yourself. yeah you yourself. should start with yourself yeah. yeah. What, what, what did you say? First, take the plank out of your, yeah. your, 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 your own eye. Because yeah. it's very easy for us. It's so easy for us to see. I can see what all y'all doing wrong. Mm -hmm. I can see it, talk about it, write stories about it, and do everything. Somehow it seems to take a little longer for me to figure out what I'm it's doing really wrong. So too. I do need to. So yeah. I think the song says, sweep around your own front door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and, I say and clean up your own backyard. Clean up your own backyard. All of those analogies—they're they, all good. And so the question is, if if what we're doing breaks the heart of God, we should probably deal with that too. 
Okay, so he goes to find Saul. Saul said, and when he finds Saul, Saul's building monuments to himself because Saul is proud of himself. Look, <laughs> look at me. I done done what God said. I'm a bad man. And Samuel says, yo, bro, what did you do? And what did Saul say? He followed out the Lord's, he carried out the Lord's instructions. That's what Saul it. said. I did it all. And then again, I, I think I shared this last week, one of the funniest verses in the Bible. So if you did what God said, what is this bleeding of sheep? In my ears. In my ears. <laughs> All of this noise. Because I expected that after you did everything God said, there wouldn't right. be anything. That's right. right. But all of a sudden, I'm hearing this. And so he says, why do I hear sheep? And what mm. does Saul say? He's saving them for the, the soldiers. Right. Did it. The soldiers kept them. He was afraid of the soldiers, and the soldiers kept the sheep. The soldiers you gave me. Yeah. They took them. Now they took them for a good reason, though, God, because we we took them so we could sacrifice them to you. Because after yeah. all, that's what you want, right? You you want sacrifice. So so and again again, I know none of you have ever done this. None of you have ever been caught in something and then blamed somebody else. I, I know that's never happened to you, but you guys know some people that have been caught in some things. That you know, and I, I will not confirm or deny that my parents might have said something to me, and I said. Tony did it. Well, that was because it was true, because Tony did do it, because that boy was trouble. He did it. He did it. But even though he did it, guess who got the beating? You. Both of you. Both. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Mama yeah. speaks up. So, so look, because, and we should all, we should, shouldn't I know, we should all know this, right? Because Adam blamed Eve. Mm -hmm. Who got the yeah. beating? Both of them, both of them did. Both of them did because mm -hmm. both of them had their own responsibility. And right. so, who, who did God tell to destroy all the Amalekites? He told Saul. He told Saul. So, so if the people decided, hey, we don't want to kill these, whose job was it? Oh, Saul. Oh. It was Saul. Saul. And so, oh, yeah. when God tells us to do something, right. husbands love your wives. Husbands love your wives. Well, God, you know the way she acts. No, that, 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 that. What, what did that have to do with what I told you to do? Mm -hmm. Pass the priest the word. Oh, wait, these people don't want to hear the word. <laughs> mm -hmm. What did I tell you to do? Yeah. And so where Saul messed up is, well, he messed up in a lot of places, but one place he messed up was he messed up thinking that he had a better idea on how to do things than God did. Mm -hmm. And again, mm -hmm. I know none of you have ever had that because y'all been walking, y'all been holy your That's whole it. lives. Mm -hmm. But... Some of them people from Genesis. No, been, see, I, some of them people from Genesis. Yeah, that's why I said some slap right on here because for Genesis they be messing up. But the Saint Mary folks. <laughs> oh, All right. <laughs> Look, if I keep if I keep making jokes like that and, and lightning strike my house, y'all call the fire department. <laughs> uh, y'all call the fire department, please help a brother out. And, and, and so, so Saul <clears throat> trusted in himself. Mm -hmm. right. Anybody know Proverbs 3, 5, and 6? Yes. Trust him okay. with all your heart. Lean not, not, to, to, your not to your own understanding. Lean not to what? Not not to your, your own, own understanding. understanding. In all, but, I mean, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Yeah. He will direct your path. So <laughs> if we know that so well, why don't we do it? Because we think we know better. Yeah, <laughs> we try to do it our own no way. Do our way. Own way. No now, so here's my next question with that. How many times do we have to learn we don't know better to know <laughs> that we don't know better? <laughs> over and over. <laughs> Come on now, let, let, let's, it's just, it's just me and you here, just us, just ain't nobody else. Yeah. I mean, let, let's, let's be real. Because we talk about the definition of it. What's the definition of insanity? 
doing, doing the same, same thing, thing over and over, over and over and expect, and like expect the return. same results. And expecting yeah. different results. Yeah. I keep driving down this road that's got a big old pothole in it, and I keep hitting the pothole. Well, maybe mm -hmm. tomorrow when I drive down the road, I want in the potholes in, in the road. I can't help it. Maybe mm -hmm. I should take a different road. Exactly. But it is insanity to keep driving oh. in the road and doing that. And some of us, we are certified crazy. Gonna get a different result. <laughs> we've been yeah. we've been doing the same thing. Okay. Over and over again, we've been doing our marriage the same way. We've been doing church the same way, and we keep complaining because nothing's changed, and it will mm. not change until we do something different. Different. Yeah. If you want different results, you've got to do something mm. different. Yeah. And Are if we've been doing it our own way. I, well, I know how to be married. I know how to work this job. I know how to do this. Do you? Has <laughs> anything changed yet? I know how to manage my money. Do you? Because God said, oh, I ain't giving my money to that church. That church, I can't trust them. How's that working out for you? <laughs> if, if, if we think here's another great question if we think we know so much better why do we spend so much time reading the bible anyway <laughs> isn't that a waste of time isn't that like in look some <laughs> okay i'm getting messy y'all take off your shoes i'm putting on my boots <laughs> isn't that like going to the doctor to get a prescription and then getting home talking about i ain't taking that mess you paid there money. There is actually people that do that. You paid <laughs> money. That man did not. Call, that woman did not call you and say, "Come see me." You right. called her and said, <laughs> "I need to see you." And then she told you, "You know what? To get well, you need to take this." And then you got home and said, "She don't know what she's talking about. I ain't taking that." <laughs> So you so wait, you paid the money for the appointment. You took time out of your life. You drove to the appointment. You actually mm -hmm. went and picked up the medicine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then got home and said, I don't oh, need that. This. And then you called the pastor and said, Pastor, I ain't feeling well. <laughs> you take your medicine? Oh, pastor, I, pastor, that doctor know what we talking about. I don't need to take that medicine. <laughs> and then you want me to pray for you now what, what you want me to pray how you want i'm sorry i don't even know who i'm talking to but you go whoever it is gonna call me later and say pastor why you put my business out there just don't make no faces now <laughs> <laughs> but if we know so much better why do we go why do we bother but maybe maybe if we try it god's way just maybe maybe or here, let me do this. Hey, Brother Wade, I know you've never done this. You, you go to the store, your wife wants you to buy a bookcase. You buy a bookcase. You get the bookcase home. The bookcase got instructions in it. I don't need no instructions. I can build this book. I know how to put together a book. How hard can it be? Bookshelf all over laces. Got all the extra pieces. And you talk about, I knew what I was doing. I know Brother Wade's never done that, Mona. He ain't your, your man. You got a good man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying what I said about your, your cowboys. Yeah, so you see how nice I am? See, that's because I'm holy, Mara. You see how I did that? I yeah, talked nice uh -huh. about him, even after he was mean to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right? And, and so, so really- That was yeah. undercover nice, Mara. I want to put up, I want to make sure. Uh-huh. I want to make sure we are not we we put ourselves in the place of Saul because we need yeah. to fix that. Yeah. Because there is a Saul spirit in us. Saul is representative of the flesh. Yeah. I know I know you got saved and God the spirit fell on you and you you did backflips and you spoke in tongues and you did all that stuff. The flesh is still in there. Yeah. And you've got to deal with the flesh. No one can deal with the flesh but you. And that's why one of the fruit of the spirit 
who love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. 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 It's like the throw is you. <laughs> self-control. So yeah. the question yeah. is whether or not you will use the spirit that God gave you so that you right. can do what he told you to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So Samuel comes to him and says, uh, well, Saul says, man, they, they kept this so they can sacrifice to the Lord. But the rest <laughs> we destroyed. We destroyed most of them. <laughs> and, and, and see, I like... Uh, Brother Wade, your version was, was said it differently. My my version in uh, verse 16, Samuel goes, stop. Mm -hmm. Stop. Just yes. Stop. <laughs> Let me tell you what God says. Now, Saul goes, and I, I and, and unfortunately, because I know I was Saul, and I, I told you all that, that story about me telling my dad that the, 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 the leaves fell that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Saul, Samuel says, let me tell you what the Lord said. And I can see Saul going, hey, tell me. Tell me how proud God is of me for me doing all oh. his great work. Yes. Because he had blinded himself. Yes. Because he, he had convinced himself that if I just do most of what God says, it'll be okay. Yes. Those people that said, I only broke two of the commandments. Mm -hmm. I, I, I only did a little bit wrong. I, I, I did most of it, but last I checked, what did the song said? 99 and a half. Won't do. Won't do. Won't, won't do. <laughs> well, won't, won't do. Well, how about 99 and three quarters? Won't do. Still won't do. Oh, that still won't do either? Dog. Oh. oh, God wants, God wants us to do it all? 100%. 100%. Yeah, that's a bummer. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a bummer. Okay, so um, let's see, Brother Smith. Where he go? Oh. he was there. There he is. Hey, he is. can you read for us First uh, Samuel fifteen, and I want you to read seventeen through nineteen. Okay. Samuel said. Though you are little in your own eyes, are you not the head of the tribe of Israel? Mm -hmm. you king over Israel. And the Lord sent you on a mission and said, go utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. Mm -hmm. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spars and do what was evil in the sight of the Lord? Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. So, so Saul get, uh, Samuel gives us this picture. What was Saul's self impression prior to becoming king? How did he see himself? That he was lowly. He wasn't he important. Small in his own eyes. He was yes. small in his own eyes. And matter of fact, if you go back and read the, the parts of 1 Samuel at his calling, when Samuel tried to find him, Saul was high. When they wanted to uh, officially have his coming out party, Saul was hiding because he didn't see himself as being the king. He, he, he wasn't seeking that position, but God right. chose him. Hey, guess what? I know some folks. I, I, let me look over here. Mr. Chandelier, I know some people. I know you. That you didn't think you were worthy, but God chose you. Mm -hmm. he, he chose you he, he appointed you to a position of leadership and what do I say leadership is not about position it's actually about influence mm -hmm. so God has appointed you Mr. Chandelier so I don't want to look at anybody directly <clears throat> he has appointed you as a, in, to a position of influence you know what kind of position that is that is a position of a parent a position of an employer a position of a pastor, a church leader. He has put you in a place where you have influence, even though you don't think you're worthy. And I love what he says in verse 18. He sent you on a mission. What's a mission? 18 and 19. The verse, that's what we're on. What's a mission? A, a, a job. A job. What did you say, Brother Wade? 
a specific task that you're appointed to do? A specific task that you were appointed to do. I like at a job. I, I, I sent you. I, I sent you not just to go walk around, but I sent you to accomplish something. Mm -hmm. Everybody, do me a favor, just because we're here. Breathe in. Breathe out. You've been sent on a mission. That's why you're still here. If God had no mission for you, you wouldn't be here. You have been sent. Saul was sent. He was sent to accomplish something. And then Samuel goes down through and says, hey, you were supposed to go and completely destroy the sinful Amalekites. Fight against them until you have annihilated them. I even like that fact. You were supposed to keep going until you were done. Because God wants you to do what? Finish. Mm -hmm. God has not sent us here to start anything. He sent us here to finish. We're, we're great starters. We can start all kinds of stuff. We start ministries. We start marriages. We start kids. We start churches. We start a lot of stuff. What are we finishing? Because if God sent you, he's got a plan for you to finish what you started. So then he says to Samuel, I mean, says to Saul, why didn't you obey the Lord? Why did you rush off on the pl plunder? And why did you do what? and do what was evil in the Lord's sight. Wait a minute now. He didn't, he didn't, um, he didn't, ha he didn't commit adultery. He didn't steal anything. He wasn't disobedient to his parents. What sin did he commit? He didn't he obey did God. Because okay. he didn't complete the mission that God assigned to him. Ah, go ahead, Wade. Wade. Uh, disobedience and pride, and pride. Pride. Uh, we, we also so that pride bit him in the butt or a little later and, on. And quite frankly, pride is I, I would argue pride is the root of all sin. Because that when I say yeah. I know better, because what is the letter in the middle of pride? I. Uh, what's the letter in the middle of sin? I. Uh, mm, coincidence? I think not. <laughs> And, and so, because we talk about the sins of omission and the sins of commission, what's a sin of commission? That you actually did it. I actually did something that I was not supposed to do. Yeah. Sin I committed omission or something. I lied. To I told my dad the leaves fell that way. Yeah, stuff like that. That's a sin of commission. So, what's a sin of omission? Something you didn't do. They didn't were supposed do to something do. That's I was right. supposed to do. And we focus, we love to talk about sins of commission. I saw what you did. I saw what you did. I saw what you did. And God says, I saw what you didn't do. Yeah. I saw what you didn't do. I, I know I told you to go 12 steps. You only went eight. Everybody else is saying, oh, look, he went eight steps. Woo, look at him. Oh, he's so good. And God's like, oh. <laughs> what other three steps? What other four steps? Other four steps. Because I, I told you to go 12. But everybody starts cheering at eight. And we like, oh, yes. And then guess just like Saul, we get to, oh, look at me. Look at the people cheering me. Because I've done, I've done good. But wait, did the people send him on a mission? Or did God send him on a mission? God. 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 Did the people send you on a mission or did God send you on a mission? So when the people are satisfied, it really doesn't matter until God is satisfied. And God right. is satisfied when we obey. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, uh, uh, Miss Daphne. Yes, sir. Uh, wait, you are, do you already read for me? Did no. you read it? Oh, you did? Okay, good. Uh, give me verses 20 through 20, just 20 and 21. Okay. <clears throat> but I did obey the Lord, Saul answered. I went on the mission the Lord gave me. I brought back Agag, king of Amalek, and I completely destroyed the Amalekites. The troops took sheep and cattle from the plunder the best of what was set apart for destruction to sacrifice to the Lord, your God at Gilgal. Okay. 
<laughs> Samuel goes, why didn't you obey the Lord? Yes. Why did you rush on the front and do what was evil in the sight? And Saul says, what I, I, did. I, did. I did obey. <laughs> I did obey. And then he starts to describe what he did. Okay. And I swear, Dad, I'm having this flashback of me and those leaves on the ground. And I'm going, I did obey. I raped <laughs> them. I got them in the piles. <laughs> because I figured that was enough. And Saul said, I love the fact he says, I went on the mission the Lord sent me. I went. Yep. He sent me. I went. Mm -hmm. Look at me. And then I brought back the king. Uh-huh. But that's not what he told him. That's the first thing you got wrong. That's not what he told him. <laughs> but I completely destroyed like, everybody else. The opposite. Yeah. That's not what he told him to do. He didn't now, and the troops, uh, them, them, them people, them nasty yeah. Israelites yeah. you gave me. Now yeah. they brought back all the sheep and all that stuff, but we brought the best so that we could sacrifice it. Mm -hmm. my, my. Yeah, and we're gonna take it to church. We we stole the money, <laughs> but we're gonna tithe off of it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I know you, you, I, you know, that's but we're gonna do the right thing with it. <laughs> you know, I didn't pay for I didn't pay for the furniture. You know, actually, because you know they, they come in to get it, so I'm gonna take it to the church, <laughs> and I'm gonna donate it to the church. Talk about it. <laughs> That's not good. That's not good. And, That's and, good. And, and, you know, because because I, I'm a, I, ooh, I'm, I just I'm doing God what you want me to do. <laughs> I'm take the church stolen furniture. <laughs> I, I'm not saying that's ever happened before. <laughs> um, and, and so here, here, here's where we run into trouble, and and I've shared this before because uh, my one of my children um, might have this habit of when we tell that child to clean their room, yeah, and you come home and the room is not clean, but the floor is vacuumed. Mm -hmm. Well. I, I mean, I appreciate what you've done. I, I appreciate what you wanted to do, but that is not <laughs> what I told you to do. Right. Now, parents, stop me if you, you've heard this one. Um, I, I, you were supposed to do your, I, well, I know I was supposed to do my homework, but I did the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> this was not an either or, it should have been a both and. And we laugh about that when we say it, from, when we hear it from our kids and we remember when they said it, but how many times has God said, why didn't you do what I told you to do? When I, but I, I did something else. Isn't that good enough? As a matter of fact, I've shared with you the scariest verses in all the Bible, Matthew chapter seven, verses 23 and 24, where Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will mm -hmm. enter the kingdom of heaven. But though, but but in that day they will say to me, "Didn't we sacrifice in your name? Didn't we heal folks? We 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 were we were preaching sermons. We were singing in the choir. We were teaching Bible study. We went to Bible study. Woo, God, we're all oh, we're all yours." And the Bible says Jesus will say, "Away from me, you workers of iniquity, because I never knew you." Yeah. Mm. It wasn't, and it, what you did, okay. However, that's not what I wanted you to do. What God wants is, Brother Wade, starts with an R. Relationship. Relationship. <laughs> and God defines relationship by obedience. And partial obedience is? Disobedience. Disobedience. <laughs> that's like we would not, I don't know why we think because we wouldn't accept it. We wouldn't accept um, partial obedience. You know, how about it? How about it? Uh, let's see. I'm going to say, oh, golly, I'm trying to figure out who on here is still working. Brother Wade, you still working. Mona, you still working. If your boss said, hey, I'm going to give you most of your pay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I mean I, I'm going to give you most of it. I, I mean, you know, things are going on. 
I'm gonna give you most of it. Would you be satisfied with them doing most of it? Got a no. problem. Got a problem. We got a problem because they are being disobedient to the contract we signed. Mm -hmm. The contract says you will pay me this much for this much work. When you try to come in at less than that, we got a problem. So how come it's okay for us to be unaccepting of disobedience, but all of a sudden we expect God? Oh, you know why? You know what? Y'all know why, don't you? Because y'all think God is a grandparent. Because <laughs> grandparents oh. accept disobedience. Yeah. Oh, look at the baby. Oh, that's a baby. Oh, the baby want Oreos for dinner. Give the baby Oreos for dinner. Mm -hmm. Y'all grandparents do it. But you notice that no, I love this. Nowhere in the Bible, no, nowhere does it say the grandchildren of God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't say that. <laughs> we treat him like a grandparent, but nowhere does God identify himself as a grandparent. Because I think he's trying to tell us, I'm not like y'all. Mm -hmm. I'm not just patting you on the head when you're disobedient. Oh, daddy loved you. Grandpa loved Papa loved you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, because y'all think about it. Some of the things your grandchildren have done, if your children had done them, eat them. Would have been beaten. <laughs> thank, thank you for being honest, Jackie. All these other grandparents, they, they straighten in their halos. Yes. Jack, I, I, Jackie's honest. I said beat them, but oh, you did didn't say beat them. Me. Good, good. Thank you. Thank oh. you. God is not a grandparent. But they God didn't. cares about obedience. And how often yeah. does God expect us to be obedient? All, All the time. time. Every right. day the ends in a Y. We say God is good. All, All the, time. the time. And all the time. God, God is good. Is good. So, so God is supposed to be good all the time. And we expect him to be good all the time. But we, we allowed to have some days off. <laughs> we know, we no. Know. No. You know, because, uh, you know, I'm really good on Sunday mornings. Mm -hmm. I, guess I got to be ready to preach. So, God, I'm really good on Sunday mornings. But you got to give me my Fridays, man. Mm. Can I have my Fridays just to kind of let my hair down and do what I want to do? But I'll be back Saturday night because I got to get my sermon ready. <laughs> we would not accept that from anybody in our lives. No, no wife would accept that from their husband. Nope. Honey, I just need one day off to do what I want to, to do my Frank Sinatra. Mm -hmm. And not one of you would accept that. But we look at God. Come on, God, you know my heart. Wait, what does that sound like? <laughs> baby, baby, you know I love you, but I, 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 but I want to go do this. But you know my heart. I love you. We wouldn't accept that. So why do we think God would? And Saul thought God would. He made me king. I did most of it. And what I'm doing, I'm doing for him. But that's not what he asked for. He asked for obedience. Not okay. sacrifice. Sister Jackie, yeah. so, uh, can you give me um, 1 Samuel 15, give me 22 through 20, 22 and 23. 22 and 23. 22. So Samuel said, has the Lord as great, del as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry, because you have rejected the word of the Lord. He also has rejected you, from being king. Mm. Ooh -wee. He, get him. <laughs> get him, brother Way. He got it. <laughs> so, get him. There, there are it. some verses, you know, we, we, we know John 3 16, because we love oh, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten mm -hmm. son. We love Romans 8 28. 
uh, all things work together for the good. We we love Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ. We love uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, for God, I know the plans that I have. Oh, you, yes. How many of us have memorized? Does the Lord take pleasure in burnt offering and sacrifice as much as obeying the Lord? Look, to obey is better than sacrifice. Yes. The attention is better than the fat of rams. Every once in a while, we ask the question, do you know better? Yeah. Do you know better? I'm a, there, there, there's a whole series of Bible studies that I'm going to talk about that, that we're going to do one day that is about, do you know what, what the Bible says is better? And in this case, Samuel is very clear. What is better? What is better than going to church every Sunday and giving an extra tithe? What is better than singing a solo or preaching on the street corner? What is better? What is better than giving away all my clothes and giving away my house? And I, what's better is obedience. Because too often we live lives trying to balance the scale. Well, if I disobey over here, if I give a little extra tithe, you know, I don't normally go to Wednesday night Bible study, but, you know, Saturday night, <laughs> well, we got to go to Bible study. I, I will sacrifice my, my, my Wednesday night so that I can balance out my disobedience. And that does not work. God's desire is obedience and while Saul might have thought I'm doing the right thing because I want to sacrifice the God that's not what God asked for and I need to challenge each one I need to challenge myself as I look at me here on the screen am I doing all of the extra stuff but I'm ignoring the things that he told me to do and think I'm doing something patting myself on the back. Oh, boy, look at you. Oh, look at the way you preaching and teaching them classes and doing all that. And God's like, yeah, but you have not done anything I told you to do about your children. But I done sacrificed all this time to study and to learn and I'm giving all this money. Whoa! He compared it to something. He compared disobedience. What did, he, what did God compare disobedience to in these verses? Right, offerings and sacrifices. But but he, he but he said it's like something. He said the, the 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 disobedience and rebellion is like something. Yeah, rebellion. And I'm glad you brought that up, Pastor. I was gonna ask that. It say for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Yeah. And when I first read that, you know, I never thought about it that way. <laughs> witchcraft. You know what? And, and, and then stubbornness. Because we often uh -huh. on our children and grandchildren about being stubborn. Mm -hmm. And the Bible uh -huh. says it is as the as the iniquity and uh idolatry. <laughs> uh -huh. Those are two powerful statements there that people don't care about. So somebody tell me, how does God feel about witchcraft? He don't like it. Mm. It's a sin. It's not only is it a sin, like it. the Bible says it's a, you know, I mean, you like to throw about homosexuality it, as an abomination. It's evil. Well, witchcraft is an abomination too, just, yeah. just, just for the, yes. just for the record. There's a lot, there's several things that, that he says an abomination. We like to use abomination. Well, that's really, really bad. That's an abomination. Well, witchcraft is an abomination and so is idolatry. And so we look at the, ooh, I would never do those. Yeah, I like and God does a math problem for us. He says, guess what's equal to these, y'all? Yes, yes. Rebellion. What, what does it mean to rebel? Y'all get authority. Run away from. Run away from. What'd you say, Mara? Go against authority. Go against authority. Some will say, to not come when called. Huh. You said come when called. And so, so, and again, I know, cause again, I'm, I'm looking at the halos on the screen and it's so beautiful cause y'all don't know anything about rebellion except from your kids. You don't know it from your grandkids but you do know it from your kids. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen it in your kids. And, but God, so we look at that and we go, oh, that's just, you know, that's a little sin. 
You know, this is it's, it's stubbornness. You know, they just a strong willed person. God says, and it's that's strange. like idolatry. And actually, you know why stubbornness is like idolatry? Because an idol is anything that you look to, trust in, worship more than you worship God. And when I'm stubborn, guess who I'm trusting in? Yourself. Yourself. I'm trusting in myself. I have said, God, will you please get out of my chair? That is my throne right there. I need to sit down for a second. <laughs> oh, I would never say that. Actions speak louder than, louder louder than words. <laughs> and so these verses, again, and, and maybe we should learn them because they are convicting. Now, yeah. of course, if you are already perfect, don't worry about these verses. Don't, don't. Don't worry about them. If you've already mastered this and you don't have any trouble with rebellion and you do everything God says, these verses are not for you. <laughs> but for the rest of us. But Pastor, when we look at that of witchcraft, mm -hmm. uh, if, if I'm being rebellious, I'm not doing what God wants me to do because I think it's something within me <laughs> that I can do. You know, I can sing some incantations. I, I can, I got the power to do this, you know, because I'm not going to do it God's way. I'm going to do it my way. Absolutely. Because you, know? you have to really witchcraft. That's idolatry. I mean, I mean, in a very real sense, witchcraft, idolatry are, are, are on a very similar level because yes. I am trusting in something yes. besides God. Right. And, and we, we, we started this earlier, quoting Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in Lord, the Lord. Lord with some of your heart. Yeah, no. Oh, oh, all, of all, of oh, all of it. All of it. All of it. Oh, okay. And, and okay. But every once in a while, you can you know, trust yourself because he gave you a mind. Yeah, it, it, Do you have it to your own understanding? Y'all just messing up everything. All the way technology. Yeah. Y'all messing up everything. You're you, you going to try to make people change the way they live. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe if we start with us. Mm -hmm. Maybe Amen. other people would follow. Amen. Right. Just a thought. And, and so the challenge of this, and, and again, when you talk scary verses, yes. because you have rejected the church. Is that what he says? The last part of verse 23. The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Give it a tithe. The word of the Lord. Because you have rejected the word. Yes. The word. The word. The word. The word. You've rejected the word. Yeah. Brother Wade, we that, that that'll get good to you right there. We teach that for a long time. Because John says, in the beginning was the Word. word and the word was with God, and the word was God. God. So when we reject his word, we are rejecting God. God. Him. We are rejecting God. Well, I, I don't know. I don't believe that, but I love God. <laughs> <laughs> I had someone tell me, he said, Yeah, I'm a Christian. I said, I don't really say, but I don't believe in Jesus. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Nope. So, how are you a Christian? Because again, Jesus is the Word. Mm -hmm. How can you reject the Word? Matter of fact, He says, "No one comes to the Father but by Me." That yeah. I am a way. The no, way. 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 Boy, words. Wait, I'm sorry. I, I one day I'm gonna get these words right. I am the way, way. the mm -hmm. truth, and the life. Yes, Jesus mm -hmm. is very, we are very narrow. We are very narrow. And he, even when he says this, I see the same thing. If you reject the word, if we reject Jesus, there is no hope. Mm. There is no hope. We, we, we we're not going to make it. And it's very sad to think, he said, because you rejected the word. You've rejected what I told you. I told you to do A, and you did C. Mm -hmm. and because you have rejected that, I have rejected you as king. I have rejected you from the mission that I have sent you on. I'm not pleased. That scares me. 
Now, because God, you know, we, we know God is merciful. Matter of fact, Monday night, Dad, we talked about God being merciful and compassionate, Brother Smith. And, and we talked about all these great attributes about God. I'm good. But we also have to recognize that he is just. Mm -hmm. And there comes a time that we will either deal with the mercy of God or the justice of God. I mean, I appreciate all these people walking around and talking about no justice, no peace. But mm -hmm. any of you guys really want justice in your life? I want mercy. Yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Pre there you go. I don't want justice. Mm -hmm. Because I know where I what happens if I get justice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Justice demands I die. Because mm -hmm. the wages of sin mm -hmm. is, death. Death. is death. That's justice. Mm -hmm. I'm I, I'm pleading <laughs> for mercy. Uh -huh. I, I, I'm pleading for the mercy of God. And, and and if I'm if I'm concerned, like I I say that I am right now, then I should probably guess what? Do better. And what did we just read? What is better? Obedient. Obedience. Obedience. It's that simple. Obedience obedience to what God has said. Well, I don't know what God's saying for me to do right now. Yeah, yeah, you do. Wives, respect your husbands. Husbands, love your wives. Uh, take care of your kids. Don't be idle. Don't gossip. Uh, God has told us a whole lot to do. Even mm -hmm. if it's not that rape. We all want a rhema word, but we won't deal with the logos word. I want a specific word from God. Don't lie. Well, you know, you know, it's just a little white lie. Uh -uh. A lie is a lie is a lie. So then that then that would be disobedience. <laughs> that that would be disobedience, and then that would be witchcraft. And we have a problem. And, and, and so the challenge that we really get from Saul's life is, or that Saul spirit in us, will we operate in the self control? Because oh, let me ask you this. Do you believe do you believe God would ask you to do something that he has not empowered you to do? Nope. Nope. No. Okay, we no, no, no. So then when we say, but that's hard. <laughs> but that's so hard. It's it's hard to forgive. It's hard to respect him when he's acting like a nut. It's hard to love her when she ain't doing what I want her to do. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. So what? Because wait, what, 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 did, what did God tell Mary? Is anything too hard for, oh, God. for the Lord? <laughs> and yeah. in your life, not only do you have God around you, but you have Emmanuel who is God with, with you, you and you've got the spirit who is God in you. you. So you've got three times God and talking about it's too high. It's too high. It's too high. Did, did you forget Philippians 4.13? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. Did you forget? All of a sudden, all of a sudden he just got, as soon as you saw the hard thing, Verse just got knocked out your head. Your, your Bible go from 412 to 414. If we're going to put it on our books and have it all over there, I can do all things. Mm. Forgiving is a thing. Mm -hmm. Loving is a thing. Mm -hmm. Respecting is a thing. Caring for is a thing. Feeding the hungry, clothing the naked is a thing. Obedience is a thing. A thing. <laughs> and we don't have to do it on our own. I can do all things through Christ. Christ. Mm -hmm. So the challenge is, and, and here's the scary part of this Bible study. When we're over, oh, that was oh, what a good, oh, good study, good study. It wasn't a good study if we don't do it. It was a waste of our time. I have wasted a lot of people's times with sermons mm -hmm. because nobody's doing them. 
people are like, how do you know what's a good sermon? What's a good sermon when they applaud? Well, if that's the case, you know, Janet Jackson preaches a good sermon. It's a good sermon when you get a lot of hits on the internet. Well, some of these folks get a whole lot of hits. It's a good sermon. It's a good study when we put it into practice. Mm -hmm. Will we do good? If you know better, do better. Do better. <laughs> you should. <laughs> and we've determined tonight that to do better is to obey. And some of us right now, there's something that we know God's been telling us to do. That there's a thing that God has been telling us to do that we were like, that God, that's so hard. I just, I, I don't know if I can do that. Mm. And out of some of your mouths, it, you, you said it. Well, God wouldn't put us in somewhere that we could, that he wouldn't give us the power to do it. We will be mm. convicted by every idle word that comes out of our mouths. So mm. today is the day, what is it? April 14th. 2021. Today is the day that we do better. We do, we, we do better. We, we do better. We obey. We obey what we know to do. And when it gets hard, we say, Jesus, you're going to have to help me with this one. Mm -hmm. Spirit, you're going to have to help me with this one. We're going to do it. It's not going to be, because if it was easy, we wouldn't need him. Mm -hmm but we need him. And if we would obey, and I, 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 I might step on my sermon on Sunday, things would happen. Good things would happen. Obedience brings a reward. Well, I need more of God in my life than obey him. Do what he says do. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Obey, and it shall be given unto you. Y'all see that? You reap what you sow. Yeah. So let's sow some obedience that we might reap some blessing. Man. All right. Questions. Man. Or, I'm sorry. I held y'all. I got, I got all excited. I held y'all. Um, questions or comments? We're going to stay in chapter, we're, chapter 15 because I do want to finish this chapter and I actually need to get into a little bit of chapter 16 as well. So we'll be back in chapter 15. Hopefully we will finish that out. If Jackie doesn't keep me talking too long. <laughs> yeah, but Jackie, why you do that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, anybody, questions, comments? Wade and Mona, it is great to see you this evening. Welcome back to uh, yes. uh, Louisiana. And uh, as we've said a thousand times before, and I will say it a thousand times again, we're still here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank All right. You. All right, let's pray. Eternal God, forgive us. Forgive us for walking in that Frank Sinatra spirit and trying to do everything our way. Forgive us for trusting in our own thoughts and thinking we know better than you. Forgive us for the witchcraft of rebellion. Forgive us for the stubbornness of idolatry. Lord God, we are sorry. You deserve better. But Lord, we're going to say it right now. This is hard. But we thank you because you've given us the power over heart. You haven't given us willpower. You've given us Holy Ghost power. Yes. And so, Lord, we ask right now that you will give us the good sense to do better to obey you in our marriages, to obey you as we raise our families, to obey you on our jobs, to obey you in this world, to do better. Because that's better than sacrifice. It's better than all the money we give. It's better than all the time we spend in church. It's better than all the other things we do just to obey you. So Lord, tonight, we want to be better Christians. We want to be better men, better women. We want to be better in every area of our lives. And so we just ask you, Lord, to continually remind us of what you want us to do. What mission are you sending us on in the moment? And then give us the courage to obey. Mm -hmm. And Lord God, if we disobey, if we come up short, we pray your forgiveness. We pray your mercy. I pray that we will obey you in that too, and that we will repent. 
because your word says that if we uh, confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, Lord, in every aspect of our lives, help us to be better. Lord, I thank you for those who have tuned in. I thank you for those who have shared and we have spoken. And now, Lord, I just ask that you will use us in a mighty way. Send us, God. Give us another chance to be obedient to your word and to your calling. I thank you. I praise you in Jesus' name. In the name of the word, we pray. Amen. And amen. amen. Thank you very much for your time and attention, everybody. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi, Mona. Hey. Pastor Payne. Yes, ma'am. Hey, listen. Have I have week. someone who's visiting me from Florida, from Orlando, Florida. Um, she's like a sister to me. And so she's going to be here with me for a couple weeks. Okay. And yeah. she was here on uh, Bible study with me. So everybody say hi to Marcia. Hello. Hi, hi. Hello. Welcome, Marcia. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she'll be here with us for a couple of weeks. All right. Wonderful. Oh, wow. Wonderful. Well, welcome to Streetport. Yeah. Welcome. Right. Right. Everybody have a good night. Good night. You too. Good night. You as well. Hello, Miss Apple. <laughs> hey, Miss Ethel. Oh, Miss Ethel came to Sunday school. She on the ball. Yeah, she called me and said she was coming to Sunday school. Then she came to Bible study. She just do. Yeah, that's good. She loves her her nephew. She think he's I something believe, else. I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> he all right. Yeah, he all right. My new sister. Yeah. All right. No. Y'all doing okay? Pretty good. I'm doing great. I like your hair. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you got a new yeah. style. Your yeah. hair looks nice too, Miss Payne. Thank oh, you. I told her I like that one the best there. That yeah. hair too. <laughs> your husband probably like like that one there better than the other one. Uh, no, probably not. You know how these <laughs> men are. They don't say nothing. You, they just say a little foolish. They don't. Like <laughs>